Good morning. It's essential during this holiday season that we remind people about the incredible dangers associated with driving under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or some combination of both. And, you know, even with the safer at home orders and bars and restaurants closed at night and nightclubs shut down, um, driving under the influence cases still are much too numerous. Uh, my office, just this year alone, has prosecuted more than 5,000 drivers. 4,600 of those were tied to alcohol. Uh, the balance were related to, well, actually 384 were tied to drugs. Another 100 were a combination of both. Unbelievable that people would drive under the uh, influence of both. We are facing another issue, and that is the nightmare of overwhelmed hospitals and ICUs. Uh, if you're in a car accident, either as a driver or as a passenger, as a result of a drunk driving incident or otherwise, it could be very hard to get help. So my message is very simple. If you are driving, do not drive under the influence. You can avert a tragedy that will live with you for the rest of your life if you survive. Please, please. If you are driving, don't drive under the influence this holiday season or any other time. I want to talk about measures that we take to grapple with drunk driving and driving under the influence of drugs. Um, as a state legislator, I authored the law that created a pilot pot project to require the installation of ignition interlocks in the vehicles of people convicted of drunk driving. The device is like a breathalyzer. You breathe into it, um, and uh, you have to be sober in order for the car to be able to start. Uh, a person convicted of driving under the influence of alcohol is going to be required by the DMV, pursuant to this approach, to ins install an ignition interlock device in their cars. The failure to have that device after you've been required to install it is itself a separate offense. And since the beginning of this year, our office has filed more than 300 cases where ignition interlock devices were required to be installed, but were not. The reason I wrote that law as a state legislator is that we knew from science, from data, that people who have ignition interlocks installed on their, in their cars learn the habit of driving in a sober way. So this has a sustained benefit over the long haul. That's why we take the failure to install those devices when ordered to so seriously. I want to make another announcement, by the way, today in conjunction with this targeted focus on preventing people from driving under the influence now or any time of the year. For the ninth consecutive year, I want to announce that my office has been awarded a driving uh, prosecution grant from the California Office of Traffic Safety through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. This year's grant, it's almost a million dollars, $980,000. It's going to continue to support my office's efforts um, and the efforts of our prosecutors in particular to focus both on alcohol and drug-related driving-impaired cases. Um, these overall efforts, of course, are designed to reduce fatalities and injuries. Under the grant, our prosecution team members, and we have a special unit, uh, our Driving Under the Influence of Drugs unit uh, is going to work with the California Traffic Safety Resource Prosecutor Training Network. We're working to expand knowledge and resources here and up and down the state. We're sharing information with our law enforcement partners on what we learn. And in partnership with the Office of Traffic Safety and the Traffic Safety Resource Prosecutor, our uh, unit is also leading a statewide data collection effort that relates to driving impaired um, and in particular focuses on the effects of driving while impaired by the effects of cannabis, um, the, crash risk, the crash risk that's associated with different drugs and combinations of drugs and issues like 
the time of the blood draw as it relates to the burn-off rates of, say, cannabis. Um, these are really important data points for us to learn to inform our state legislative partners as we continue in California to evolve the uh, protective approach of public safety when it comes to driving under the influence of drugs and cannabis in particular. So today, three basic points. First, if you are going to get behind the wheel, please don't be under the influence of either drugs or alcohol or certainly a combination of both. Second, the ignition interlock device is a life-saving device that has the benefit of creating a sustained level of safety on our roads. If you're required to have one installed, you must install it. Our office, office will prosecute if you don't. And this prosecution grant that we've received is particularly important now with cannabis use so pervasive in our state as we try to learn more about how to be most effective about assuring that people don't drive impaired by cannabis and when they do, that they're prosecuted so they don't do it again. I wanna provide a lot of thanks. Our uh, unit that focuses on these issues is comprised of Deputy City Attorneys uh, Magdalena Casas, Anthony King, and George Topshin. They are led by another terrific member of our team, uh, uh, Farhad Khadam, uh, who is a subject matter expert on driving under the influence of drugs. And this team manages all the work of our office in this regard, those thousands of cases. Uh, they're supported by administrative coordinator, by the way, Vanessa Chavez, whose work we always appreciate very much. I want to extend thanks again to our partners at LA City View Channel 35 for conveying this very important public service information. And Arlene Navarez again is here with us uh, to perform her exquisite translation of what's happening today. So thank you, Arlene. Ahora uh, en español. Este año se nos ha presentado tremendas dificultades. Y estos días de fiestas presenta sus propios desafíos. Cada año me presento ante ustedes durante la temporada de fiestas para recordarles lo peligro que puede ser manejar bajo la influencia de alcohol, las drogas o cualquier combinación de ambos. También nos enfrentamos al escenario de pesadilla de unidades de cuidados intensivos en nuestros hospitales abrumados al máximo de su capacidad. Si tiene un accidente de coche, ya sea como conductor o pasajero, podría ser muy difícil obtener rendirle ayuda. Si está bajo la influencia, no conduzca. Por el bienestar de usted, su familia y otras personas. Gracias. Okay, Rob, any questions? Yes, Claudia Pescuta from KNX News Radio 1070. Antoine Jones has filed a federal lawsuit um, accusing city attorney, you, city attorney, and two attorneys in uh, your office of fraud, civil rights violations, and wasting taxpayer funds in the DWP litigation. Any comment? Yeah, sure, Claudia. Uh, good to hear from you. I haven't reviewed the whole complaint, but you know, it appears just to be a rehash of old allegations. I can say unequivocally that I've always acted with complete integrity. And any allegation to the contrary is absolutely false, period. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks everybody. <laughs>